I'm getting ready to embark on a year of lasts. The last first day of high school, the last parent-teacher conference, the last sporting event where I'll cheer for my son from the sidelines. Come August, I'll be taking the last annual photo of Kyle, holding a sign saying first day of school as he sits on our front porch. His legs, which are in constant motion because he's an accomplished dancer, are preparing to take him on a journey on which I won't accompany him. I'm sad knowing that I won't literally be by his side as he makes his way into the world. My husband and I have worked hard to instill in Kyle a love of learning and the inevitability of college. But lately, I've been telling my boy that his dad and I may have been overstating the importance of university education just a bit. I teasingly suggest that maybe he shouldn't take the SAT and think about which colleges would be a good fit. Perhaps he should instead consider a career in fries and burger management at McDonald's. After all, with a minimum wage job, he won't have the financial ability to live on his own. And then I might get to keep him closer just a while longer. My own mother never really let me go. She expected me to call her every day and was forever disappointed when I didn't. I am beyond grateful that cell phones didn't exist in my teen and college years. <laughs> like a prisoner on home arrest, I would have been electronically monitored by and tethered to my mother who would have wanted to know where I was at all times. So, more than most, I understand the importance of giving my son his freedom and allowing him to explore boundaries. Yet I continue to feel a tug between giving him the wings I know that he needs to make his way in the world and wanting to hold him close and keep him safe from the inevitable bumps and bruises. Being a mother has been a series of holding ons and letting goes. When Kyle was about to start kindergarten, I offered to drive him to school the first day. But he told me he was a big boy who didn't need that. And after he boarded the big yellow bus whose steps dwarfed him, he gave me a quick wave and smile and went on his way. But he loved having me volunteer in the classroom and go on field trips, happily skipping alongside me, holding my hand. In third grade, after we moved him to a Quaker school where children start the day in silence during the settling in time, he cozily nestled in my lap each morning. When he moved up to the middle school two years later, he was too cool to sit in my lap. Yet he still gently and surreptitiously leaned into me during settling in on the first day, using my legs as a touchstone of security. Our legs have danced together through the years. As a baby, Kyle delighted in being twirled in my arms as I moved along to Broadway show tunes. In his toddler years, he boogied beside me as we blasted Raffi for him and Springsteen for me. At his bar mitzvah, we held each other close on the dance floor as we joyously celebrated this rite of passage. And he's a good sport, who will still occasionally bop around the house with me when a tune we both like is playing. But now he's starting to find new dancing partners and new stages, including most recently the Kennedy Center in DC and the Symphony Space in New York City. The joy I get from watching him dance is indescribable. And while I understand why he wants to celebrate after those performances with his fellow dancers instead of with me and his dad, I feel a twinge of sadness. As he dances away, I miss him, because not only do I love him, I really like him. I wish for more time with him. I didn't really expect to enjoy being the parent of a teenager. I didn't much care for teenagers, even when I was one myself. <laughs> Yet the love and humor and tenderness in our relationship delight me more than I ever could have anticipated. When I became a mother nearly 17 years ago, I treasured all of the firsts, first steps, first words, first tooth. But in the blink of an eye, the baby I so wanted and cherished has grown up into a young man, ready to create his own firsts, first day of college, first love, first career. And as he does, I'll be the woman on the virtual sidelines, cheering him on and holding him close. And while I may not be dancing close in his arms, he will always be dancing close to my heart.